Uh, the fascinating part about the delta is you kind of have to divide it by central delta, north, east, south, and west. The reason for this is the delta is a feeder system for multiple different rivers. We had a big six inch rain day a few weeks back uh, just before the crew made it out here. And I live, in, I live on the Stockton Delta and that would be considered the Southeast or East Delta more or less in my opinion, uh, which got blown out. Everything, all the patterns that were true there. And what happens is, depending on these rivers is how much dissolved oxygen's in the water, how clear it is, how much sediment's in there. So a good way to fish the Delta is go around and look for an average depth clarity of around two and a half to three and a half feet. Once it gets too clear, the fish are ultra selective because they're used to a little tent. So I've been bouncing around central, south, north, east, and west. Um, so what I found is more of the central western delta to have more consistent fish and right about three foot of visibility and cleaner, more vibrant green plant life and about a degree or two warmer. And believe it or not, they're like completely different ecosystems that you can access by boat, but you got to know how to navigate the, uh, the spider web of delta canals and channels and creek arms. So if you don't have a uh, chart plotter, a good GPS unit on your boat coming out to the California Delta, I wouldn't suggest it. So where we're headed out today is the Greater Discovery Bay area. And what that is, it's kind of a more protected area that's not getting hit by a direct river system. And this is kind of where we found that cleaner, healthier water. This time of year, in the later fall, kind of just looking for panfish to be prevalent because the delta this year has been kind of void of shad, which is very awkward. Normally there's striped bass and largemouth bass all over the delta in the fall. And they'll push every single arm of the delta. You'll find stripers and largemouth busting shad, but they've been doing a lot of invasive plant treatment. And I believe that's reduced the amount of zooplankton in the water that shad feed on. So what we're doing now is we're timing tides and finding areas with lots of bluegills and red ear sunfish uh, prevalent that these largemouth are gonna feed on. So what they're gonna often do is they'll run into back of dead end sloughs, they'll be on flats where there's a degree or two warmer water, and timing the tide. For example, the area we're headed today, I found a lot of bass about a week and a half, almost two weeks ago, and tons of panfish in there. But the tidal timing on the Delta is very unique, whether it's an incoming or an outgoing, and whether that's a large tide or a small tide. Behavioral differences, if you have a narrow channel, um, a smaller tide is still moving a substantial amount of water, and that may be what they want to feed on there, to where if you're in a wider part of the river, you may want a bigger tide, which is going to move water a little bit faster and position them to the structure and cover, and that may be their feeding window, and it could serve just the opposite. If you have a big tide and a narrow slough, that can destroy it. So when you find fish pre-fishing on the Delta, and this is what confuses a lot of people, is they'll catch a big one in a spot and they'll say it was outgoing or incoming, but they don't look at what part of the tide it's on. That may only be a foot and a half of water, and you may go out there on incoming again. You say, I caught them on incoming, but you may be at two and a half foot of water. So timing your tides and matching to when you catch one pre-fishing is really going to show you when you're gonna catch those fish. Was it a small tide? Was it a big tide? Was it a foot and a half of water? You have to try to duplicate that as much as possible because remember, if the water fluctuated up two feet, you're fishing entirely different waypoints. And in a shallow river system, theoretically is just like equivalent to a lake going up and down 20 feet to them. They may have a favorite stick that they're just under the surface and that's two foot over their head. You were catching them on top water the time before, it may not work this time. So we have an incoming tide coming in right about now. You see this water kind of just rushing across here. And this is actually called Brazilian Elodia or Elodia, whatever you want to call it. I like saying Elodia shines better. But you can see back behind there where that rock meets the water, you can see about a couple foot of clearance, okay? Clearance, not clearance, definitely clearance. And when I land my frog up in there, that's a trough that I'm targeting. So you often hear about tidal water fishermen or delta fishermen mentioning the trough, and now I'm back over the yellow deal. Well, that trough right now only has about six inches of water in there, and we got a 
three foot incoming tide. So later in the day, that trough's going to become larger and that water is going to get up there to where it's going to make those bigger fish that are now buried into this cover comfortable uh, moving back into that trough. They'll get more water over their head. Uh, they'll get water into those rocks and go look for crawfish. So a lot of the time on the bigger incoming tides near the top, a lot of those tidal water fishermen want to target the trough.